last night on The Bachelor. I am in love with Joey, and everyone sees it. I feel like I need to tell him. I don't want to leave with things left unsaid. Um. I appreciate you being here. <laughs> oh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's hometowns week on The Bachelor, and you know what that means. Joey's gonna be walking into this episode like... What's your dad like? I wanna meet that dad. And first up on the dad tour of 2024 is Kelsey's dad, as Joey's back in the Big Easy for the first time since his one-on-one -on -one with Charity. Here, the two will be tandem biking through a park and eating some beignets, while a definitely not staged woman in a wedding dress just happens to be taking photos a few feet away from them. That's someone in a wedding dress Wait, what? What are the odds, though, that like she's just walking around taking bridles? That's amazing! What are the odds? No! Now, a lot of this early date is spent talking about how Kelsey wishes her mom could be there to meet Joey. So, meeting Kelsey's dad and siblings is going to be a big deal. And when Joey does meet Kelsey's dad, Mark, he pulls out a photo album full of pictures of Kelsey's mom. After that, the group then splits into the typical hometown private chats. First up is Joey and Dad, who of course has concerns about the other women and asks where Joey's feelings are at. But Joey reassures him that he's being cautious with how he vocalizes his feelings, not because they aren't there, but because he wants to protect Kelsey's heart as much as he can in this unusual circumstance. Which reassures Dad, but really, all that matters is this. As a father, I'm a, of course concerned with Kelsey. I think the man deserving of Kelsey is one that she picks. Then it's time for Kelsey to sit down with her father, and here she expresses how she wants to find a man who will love her the same way her dad loved her mom, especially when her mom was passing. Knowing that after like, you saw like the love of your life like pass away, knowing that you had to take care of all of us and like be there for all of us, like I can't imagine. You know, I want somebody like that for me. And Dad says that Kelsey deserves that feeling, the one he had with her mom, because it's the best feeling in the world. I think I love him. <laughs> um, but no, he- There's always a possibility of heartbreak. You just never know when it's gonna come. Kelsey's ready for enjoying life. Um, and with that, she has to be ready to you know, suffer through heartbreak if that's what happens. Now this is a theme we're gonna see all hometowns. Parents encouraging their kids to go for it instead of walling off in an effort to protect themselves. Cause yeah, this is unusual, yeah, there are three other women, yeah, you could get your heart broken, but also, these women are adults, and if they really want this, they need to put themselves out there. And well, Kelsey is ecstatic after this date and seeing her family's approval. Especially after just him meeting my family, like, I just want to blurt that I love him. I hope that he feels the same way. So with that, we're moving on, and up next, we're in not Hawaii for Rachel's hometown. As production didn't want to bust out the cash to fly everyone and a whole camera crew to Hawaii, so instead they brought Rachel's family to Rancho Cucamonga. And here, Rachel's really setting up Joey for success as much as she can, giving him the proper names to call her parents out of respect, showing him the manapo, a gesture in Filipino culture that shows respect, and also detailing that her last relationship was very serious, almost to the point of an engagement, and her parents were very close to him, so they might be guarded as they don't want to get hurt again. I mean, they don't want Rachel to get hurt again. But when Joey comes in and pulls out the monopo, everyone's like... And I mean, stuff like that has got to soften you up as a parent because it shows you two things. One, that your kid cares enough to set this man up for success, and two, that this man likes your daughter enough to come out and do this to impress you. That being said, mom and dad are still going. Yeah, it's just so. Um... I can feel your hesitancy, and I understand it. <laughs> okay. 
she's been hurt. And Joey says that's totally understandable, but also it's a tough spot for him because he wishes he could promise more, and Rachel deserves that. But at the end of the day, even with the reservations, the theme of the week continues as Mom tells Rachel that nothing else matters if this is what Rachel chooses. Here's the deal, it's not Joey choosing you. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Same goes for Dad when Joey sits down with him and asks him for his blessing to propose at the end of this. If that time comes, yeah. she has my number. Yeah. And you can you know, call me man to man. Which is basically saying yes. If you're going to propose and Rachel wants that, call me and you'll have my blessing. However, while Rachel's parents have shown some skepticism, Rachel's sister tells her to go all out and say how she's feeling. So, at the end of the day, Rachel tells Joey, I know I told you before that I was like falling for you, um, but I'm definitely falling in love with you, and I see a future with you. I, of course, I want it to be us at the end. And we're now on to the next hometown in Becker, Minnesota, to see the infamous Christmas tree farm as big city tennis player meets small town blonde white woman in Game Set Love, which by the way is an actual Hallmark movie. The biggest match of their lives, trust the process, is off the court. But here, Daisy is really looking for guidance when it comes to how she feels about Joey. Like will he be able to fit in with her family or the quirky sidekick friends of Daisy's that are in every Christmas Hallmark movie. But like this whole experience has honestly changed my perspective and my outlook on life, even if it's not us like at the end which i hope it is like i'm gonna like have that forever and like and yet again there seems to be that little seed of doubt in daisy's mind despite saying that joey has helped her realize she can be loved regardless of her medical history eventually though it's time for joey to meet the family and as joey sits down with daisy's mom he tells her that this is an important day because daisy has not been comfortable telling joey the extent of her feelings so mom comes in to tell daisy I want Daisy to express to Joey how she's feeling and <laughs> I would like her to put the walls down and be vulnerable. And when Daisy tells her dad she's been putting up walls to protect herself from being hurt, once more, the theme of the week continues. If you think that you're falling in love with him. I think I am. Okay, so then shoot the shot, right? It's not like you're gonna lose your hearing over it. <laughs> so Daisy lays it all out and decides to shoot her shot. I want you to know I am falling in love with you and I've been falling in love with you and I mean that from like with my whole heart. Well looks like we just watched one woman salvage her chance at a fantasy suite so let's now move on to watching a woman completely destroy her chance at one as Maria's hometown is up next in Niagara Falls. Here Maria and Joey jump on the Maid of the Mist to have their Pam and Jim moment plus of course Okay. And this helps Maria build up the courage to tell Joey that all the shenanigans from last week were because she was scared. However, he's incredibly important to her. So important, in fact, that she's never brought anyone home except him. And who boy, up ahead, are we in store for a bachelor dad that will have you saying, I think I like this dad a lot. What do you think's gonna happen when they walk in? I don't know. What are you gonna do with their hands in hand? Oof. Okay, I was not expecting the Godfather reenactment, but I'm here for it. Maria's 100% daddy's girl. If she gets hurt, it would be a problem for Joey. So here they set up this absolutely ridiculous Sopranos Godfather music for this man, as if he's about to tell Maria not to worry about whether or not Joey's going to pick her because... I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. But when the two sit down and Joey tells him, If it does come to the point of getting down on one knee, it would be hard to do that without knowing that her family, especially you as her father, would accept me and possibly be able to have your blessing to marry your daughter. Suddenly, his attitude towards Joey is a little more like that cute little godfather from Zootopia. Cause this guy melts. I mean, that tough guy persona folds faster than a 2-7 poker hand. So if I know you're the guy that she chose, I respect her decision. I would have no problems giving you my blessings. And there's that theme of the week one last time. But also, come on, look at this guy now. He's ready for the big fat Greek Italian wedding featuring the little girl from the Pacifier movie. Grandmother, you're fighting me. 
good. And the boy from Luca. He even turns to Maria now to tell her to buck up because Joey says you've been holding back and we can't have that now. I know you got your guard up. Yeah. But put it down. Give this a chance. He's a good guy. And if it doesn't work... I'm gonna whack him. At least you tried. Oh, yeah, of course. That's more reasonable. Now it's at this point we learn why Maria has never brought anyone home, as production sets up some childhood videos while the entire family watches from the windows. However, once it's time for Maria's big moment to put that guard down and tell Joey how she really feels... Um... I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you inviting me in. Yeah. Ooh, and she was right there, too. Right at the finish line. Oh, and you just know Dad must be facepalming at the window going... He spikes the ball at the one-yard line. The one f***ing yard line. I mean, I just... I'm getting to the end zone, dummy. I mean... It's... Now, Maria carries this regret into the rose ceremony as she realizes she might never get the chance to tell Joey how she really feels. So... Joey? Can I talk to you for a second? Well, Maria pulls Joey behind this war helicopter to tell him she would regret not saying she's falling in love with him. They then scurry back to continue the rose ceremony. What was that about? Sorry. What was that about? I don't know. You don't I'm know? Freaking out. You don't know, but sorry. You asked him to talk. It wasn't. It was just what I had to do in the moment. I'll tell you one day. But ultimately, as Daisy and Kelsey get the first roses, Joey's mind was already made up. Too many stunts, too much hesitation, too little, too late. Rich. And with that, Maria is going back home. Joey pulls her aside one last time to say goodbye and tells her why he made this decision. I was trying my best to get there. It just tonight, I, I felt like it would be dishonest to you to move forward with the amount of doubts that I have. But Joey, you were warned. You know what happens now. That soft little godfather, Mr. Georges, is not going to be happy, and you know what he said. Maria is 100% daddy's girl. If she gets hurt, it would be a problem for Joey. Mm. Then I have only one request. Awesome. So that's it for this recap of The Bachelor Week 8 and Hometowns. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, Comment your thoughts on the week down below, and subscribe to the channel for more content. And, until next time, Bachelor Fan Take, out. What's your dad like? I want to meet that dad.